Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The queen, the icon, the legend. And we're celebrating her today. That's with right. All her flowers, ladies and gentlemen, Mary J. Block. Hey. Hey, good morning. These are your flowers, by the way. We just didn't want to block the shot. Thank you. In yes. your balloons and your crown. Thank you. Yes, yes, Thank yes, you. yes, yes, yes. So my life documentary. What made you say I want it's time to do it now? Well, I did it like two years ago. I was um on the royalty tour and it was the twenty fifth anniversary of the My Life album and everybody was celebrating it. The, um social media, the whole world was just love everywhere. And I felt like, you know, it was time to do it then because it was the twenty fifth and I never did it and everybody was like, You should do it, you know. And I said, Um, this is the right time because I can gather up all the testimonies and gather up all the love and the energy and um shoot the documentary we did it in like two years so this is just it was just time Charlamagne and I said earlier today that we, we, we cried watching it yeah I cried oh, I, I cried like so three much. times oh. like three times and I, and I was I was like I was, I was watching it for you I could tell it was emotional and mm -hmm. I was wondering like you know uh, reliving the making of the album did it stir up more happiness or trauma it actually I look at this as like um, the other side like we on the other side of it now. So mm -hmm. we're not crying just because we're revisiting this and we're sad about it. We're mm -hmm. revisiting it and we're sad because we had to see it, but we're also crying because we're happy that we're on the other side. Mm -hmm. We got out on the other side, but you know, it, it was painful having to go back and see all that stuff. Seeing you know? Andre mm -hmm. too. Yeah, you know, but it's but it's 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 okay now because I can, I can do that mm -hmm. because I'm strong enough to do that now. Mm. Were you happy Andre was there? I mean, I know you're happy, but isn't it a blessing that Andre was there to to talk and to share his experiences and everything? Yeah, I was so happy that we got a chance to cause, to get him because nobody knew that he wasn't going to be here. Right. Mm. So that was, man, to see him in the documentary made me cry. Mm. And you said you didn't know that you were you back then. And mm -hmm. I think so many mm -hmm. women, so many black women go through that when they're younger, when, you're, when you look back and you're like, I didn't know how special I was, your fans knew. Yeah. And they knew how much you touched them and you helped people get through so many difficult times, but you didn't know the power that you had. Not at all, not even a little bit. That's why I ran myself through so many things. I, ran, I, I, I went through drugs and alcohol and just treating myself so bad because I didn't know I was worthy of anything. I didn't know I was this person, right? This person that I can truly say, I deserve some everything now, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I, I give so much in my life and I work so hard on myself, you know, not anybody else on me mentally, spiritually, physically. So I, I didn't know I had this power and I didn't know, I didn't know, <laughs> I just didn't right. know, you know what I mean? And um, when you don't know, you, you can't, you know, when you don't know who you are, you can't treat yourself well. You can't, you can't, you, you're not, you can't, you're no good to anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, so now I, I feel like I, I earned the right to say I'm good for something. <laughs> I'm good to someone and I'm, I'm good for everything because I earned it and I'm still earning it because yes, it's not over. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I yeah. cried watching you um, talk to your younger self. Like when you was watching the video, like at what point did you know your, your inner child needed, needed healing? Man, uh, it was a it was a years and years of finding out. I think 2016 was my like real. You know what, Mary? You have to really gather. You have to really gather all of you up. The young mm. you, the confused you, the the everything you just and just love all of you. You know, just love all of you. And I think that came. I can't say it came in 1994 or 1996 or in 2000. It just it was a process of you gotta love you, baby you, mm -hmm. older you, confuse you, great you, clumsy you, whatever it is you <laughs> are, alcoholic you, whatever it is, you have to to love you. And the inner child was 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 suffering, thinking everything was her fault. And that's the that's the one that was making me feel ashamed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had to, you know, as an adult with all this confidence, you know, that I I'm developing, that's the one that I embraced the most because she hurt, she got hurt the most. Mm -hmm. When did you realize that you needed to change? Like what was the knock on the door, the thing that says, nah, I need to figure this out now. What in 2016 got you to that point? Well, 2016 was terrible. <laughs> you know, we all we all saw it go down in, in the world, what, what happened. And um, 
when I got out of that horrible situation, I was like, I'm never going to allow myself to uh, hurt like that again or, or anybody to hurt me like that again. You know, I don't deserve that. And I don't deserve to treat myself like that. So I think it was during the No More Drama album when I was like, I'm tired of feeling like this. But it was a, it was an ongoing process of healing, getting getting better, getting stronger. But the day, I mean, the actual day, I don't know the day, but um, the time was during the No More Drama album mm. is when I said, I'm tired. I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of feeling like I hate myself. I'm tired of feeling like I want to kill myself. I'm tired. So it was a process of just still doing the same thing, but trying to be stronger, trying to be happy, trying to find some joy somewhere, somehow. And, you know, we soldiers and we strong and we from the hood and nothing embarrasses us easy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what else you got? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm going to get through this the best way I can. I'm going to thug through this the best way I can. I'm a, however I can get through it, it's, it's going to be nasty. And, it's, and sometimes it's going to be nice, but, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. What really touched me was seeing Puff also talking about how both of you were going through so much during that time. Yeah. Just a lot of heartache. And you guys were kids. Like, yeah. we forget that when we look back at it. You were so young when you put that album out, going through so many different things. So you guys leaned on each other a lot during that time. Yeah. What were those conversations like with Puff while you were doing the album? I mean, about his pain. You know what he was going through he never really got into detail with me about it mm -hmm. but i knew because i know i i knew i know him mm -hmm. <laughs> and i knew him and i knew what he was dealing with but he was just you know like any man didn't want to discuss it with his little sister and, and me on the other hand i was you know dying in public so everybody knew what i was dealing with but i didn't want to really tell him what i was dealing with because i didn't want him to kill somebody Mm. <laughs> right. mm, mm. so I just but he knew though he knew and so you know he said just put it in the records just put just put I it in music I was so mad when I seen Casey do that interview where he I was like oh the international interview yes and then they asked you to I mean that has to be the worst that, like honestly like, I'm to disgusted have, it did disgust me I'm not gonna lie because as women we look at it like that's Mary like show some respect nah, that is Mary up. damn Jay Blige but like you said at that time you didn't even know exactly it was embarrassing but look how I was treating myself you know I mean I can't I'm not taking the whole blame but I, I had to take responsibility for me this is what was lightening the load you know, I'm not pointing the finger. You did it. You did it. A lot of people did it, but I got to fix it, period. And you talk about forgiveness, too, on mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So what is the process of forgiveness like for you when it comes to all the things that you've been through? Like you said, you can't take all the responsibility. Right. You just got to release people. Just release them and, and that's it. Just don't, you know, for me, I can't be responsible for what you did. And I can't keep pointing my finger at you for what you did. All mm -hmm. right, you did it. I don't never have to see you again. I don't never have to deal with you again. But I do have to deal with me every single day. And I'm not going to carry the poison of um, unforgiveness in my heart so that, you know, it, it, you know, you don't even know what I'm, you don't even know that I'm feeling this, feeling like this all my life. So mm -hmm. I don't want to be stuck and dying every day. You know, every, every time you you get stuck in um, unforgiveness and you just get stuck, it's like you dying every day. You losing mm -hmm. yourself again. It's like, ah, I want to grow. I want to, I want more. So you do forgive everybody, but you just don't want to see them. You know, just don't want to yeah, be like. Yeah, forgiveness does not necessarily mean reconciliation. I don't right. need to reconcile. All you just need to know is that I forgive you, and please don't come over here right. because every day I have to remember that I forgive you. Like that's it's a process. We have to remember that we forgave a person because when you see him, you got to remember. That's right. <laughs> what made you forgive, forgive him? Though? But fuck I, him. I can't, I can't, I'm not at the forgive phase. Forgive him, but Yes, mm -hmm. I'm not exactly. at the forgive phase. So what allowed you to say to all those people that hurt you, that you said, you know what, you hurt me. You might not even apologize, but I forgive you. What What allowed you to do that? Because I'm not, I can't, I'm not there yet. My energy is my, I, I don't have time to give people my energy. Like, I don't have any time to waste on you, you know, me being mad at you. Like, I just, I, I don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't care. You, you wasn't worthy of my time, of my energy. Go ahead with your life. Killing with success, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I just got, mm -hmm. I got to keep pushing. I got to keep moving. And if you don't, you're going to, you know, you're just going to be stuck. And being stuck is the, the worst thing that can happen mm -hmm. to you. You're just stuck and you just, so many people are just stuck in 1994. Mm -hmm. right? 
I don't I don't want to be stuck in 1994. I don't want to be stuck in 2020. I want to be already in 2021 thinking about the next thing, but I can't move if I'm still in 1994 pissed at you. Gotcha. All pissed at yourself. That's why that's yeah. why I love that scene where you was talking to your younger self because I was sitting there like, how do you forgive your younger self? How do you give your younger self that 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 grace and you know and, and you talk to her with so much care because it's you it's 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 you it's your child that's your baby mm -hmm. that's your love that's you that's it you're not gonna get anything else like that's me when I look at him I'm like gosh she hurts so much she's been through hell I love her I gotta and I look at the little girl pictures she's been through hell I gotta I gotta take care of her mm -hmm. because she's me and if I don't take care of her she can get me hurt. You know what's crazy? Uh, yesterday I was I was talking to a lot of people in my tribe and I was talking to my sacred purpose coach and that's why it hit me so hard because she was telling me the same thing. You have to embrace all the old the old versions of you. You have to embrace it all. Like you have to bring them on this journey with you. And so when I saw you doing that, I'm like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. So it just it just hit different for me. That's all. Now what hit different was when you said you talked about all the things that you dealt with as a child and they were all horrible and nasty. I wouldn't want that for anybody. But then when you said there's more that I can't even talk about, I was like, what's the more? Cause I mean, you 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 said some things that are so horrible. Like I'm like, you you were dealing with a lot. And the fact that you were able to climb out of it is is a blessing. And who was there besides your sister to, to help you crawl out of those situations? It was just me, my mom, and my sister. Two women living in the hood, no male figure. I mean, it was hell going from, you know, just getting to the store. <laughs> going from going from the house to the store, she, my mother going to work, leaving us, you know, with people she thinks she can trust, and that's that's life. You know what I mean? And my mother's a soldier, mm -hmm. little woman, a soldier, strong as I don't know what. And we just watched her and, and mimicked her, you know. And that's really it. You know, we we yeah. I mean, do people have to struggle and have trauma to to to, to grow? It's not they they have to. You just do. Mm -hmm. You know, if you do, you do, and you're gonna have it. Right. I don't think anybody alive could say that they haven't had some type of yeah. trauma at some point. Exactly. It just makes you feel bad watching my life because we all would say we want back in the day we'd be like we want Mary to go through something so she can keep making this good music. But no, you shouldn't want nobody to have to go through that to make that kind of art. Right. You know, during that interview when you were watching your younger self, you said that you used to be mean. Right, so I'm like, Never Mary. smile, she said, never smile. And and you didn't like the interviewer. You said you must not have liked the interviewer mm -hmm. that was doing it. I know I didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what would make you like not like somebody? And was that a reputation? Because you, you yourself said you were mean. Was it a reputation mm -hmm. you had? Because I haven't heard Mary was mean, but you were going through a lot. And sometimes people don't understand that. And I feel like even today, when you interview these celebrities, you don't, people think it's a perfect life. But they also don't understand what goes on behind the scenes. And so was that something that hindered you in any way? Was it a reputation? It absolutely hindered me. And mm. I had a reputation for being a bitch and being difficulty, excuse me, being difficult and not making it to interviews one time, not making it to shows. And I was doing all of that, everything. Um, it, it was... Um, yeah, I, I had a reputation. Because things like that, we don't hear about so much because we didn't have social media back then. Mm -hmm. right. So I feel like you could get away with a lot more and not know this used to happen. Yeah, I was, I was, I was bad. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was, I, my thing was I didn't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. I didn't trust anybody. And it took me a long time to trust. I still don't really trust people that much. But then I was just on guard, like straight out of the hood, like, please just <laughs> don't say nothing stupid. And it seemed like everyone that interviewed me was saying something stupid and asking the same stupid questions over and over again. But what I realized when I got older is that that's their job. Mm -hmm. They're doing their job. And I, I, I realized that I have to learn how to respect people's job, even if they're being stupid. You know, there's a way to combat that without being like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, and having that reputation. So it, it, I had to learn the hard way. It wasn't, wasn't easy because I was cursing people out. I wasn't making interviews. I wasn't making shows. It, it was bad. Did you ever rectify that? Like go back and talk to people later in life? I did. I, I remember I had to go to, a, to, the, to the record label and um, just apologize to so many people. And when I apologized to all those people, they were like, like they were holding their hearts. Like, 
like and it was like thank you so much yeah. and i was like oh my god and I must have been a monster, and I and I don't I don't even remember all the stuff I did. And they were coming up to me and telling me that I was cursing them out, and you know I remember some of it, but some people I was like I don't even remember your face. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going off. That's because I didn't trust anybody, mm-hmm. and I was on guard. When did you realize you had the voice? When did you realize that that voice was going to make you famous? I realized that voice was going to make me famous when Andre came to my house. When Andre came to the hood, that was it. And did you believe in Andre when he came with those Gucci shoes and them white pants coming in the middle Why of the Why didn't hood? he get robbed? The way, the, <laughs> cause the way you described the, your hood is just like, so he had to get robbed. Somebody had to try him. Had to too much. Watch he had no security, no nothing. He just... <laughs> you got to remember, Andre's from the Bronx, so we don't know what he was packing. Yeah, That's yeah, true. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. They probably looked at him and was like, yo, he, you know, they probably mm-hmm. were scared of him, you right. know? Mm-hmm. But he came right upstairs. And um, yeah, that's, that's when I knew when, when Andre was like, when he was in my living room, I said, all right, something's going to happen. But even that, then it was like, well, when it happens, it happens. Because you standing here and, you you know, you're this big CEO, but we still here. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. was still in the projects when, when you remind me was on the radio. Mm-hmm. I was still in the projects when Real Love hit big. We had, I was like, oh, we got to get out of here. How so, difficult was it? Because, I, you know, we were all in, in, in high school and we don't see how hard it took. We just knew... Mary J. Blige signed and all of a sudden Remnants was cool and then Real Love out the window. How long did it take for you to get going? Was it a long drive or was it just first single in the pop? Well, the first thing I did was with Jeff Red. Um, Jeff Red was already signed and mm-hmm. I went, I, I, I started singing background with him on some of his out on, on his records. And then I did the Apollo with him. I, if you look at the Apollo, that's me in the background singing with Jeff Red, and that was my one of my moments but I had to go back to <laughs> Slow Mom after right, that right. Mm-hmm. and after the Father MC video mm-hmm. I had to still yes, that father I, MC. Still, I still had to go home mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was terrible it but was you probably hell. was a star in the hood though when I, you came home I, listen to my friends but to the <laughs> niggas that hated me I was I was I had to fight my family had to fight we had to it was rough and, and I didn't realize what was now that I go back and think about it, I'm like, wow, we was really in the hood still mm-hmm. while the records was charting. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's crazy. I, I wondered what was going through your mind because, you know, you, you performed Anita Baker for Andre and then you got the opportunity to perform with Anita Baker. What was going through your mind in, in that moment when you was performing with her? What was wow. what was what was that Mary telling Little Mary? It's just great. I was just so happy that, that Anita Baker existed mm. because if it wasn't for Anita Baker, I wouldn't be sitting here. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for that uh, tape that I made, a caught up in the rapture, Andre wouldn't have came to my house. So mm-hmm. when I was singing with her on stage, and I was about to cry, like cry every five minutes because that woman was my angel. Mm. Like her, her, her angel album, her uh, rapture album, every song that woman had, I was home singing it. You know, I, my sisters and um. And I, we was playing out those albums all over the place. But who knew that my one of my favorite songs was going to get me the deal that I got? Mm-hmm. That's why you kept telling her to take it away because yes. you were about to cry every yes. time. <laughs> and that's why she was like, "Don't cry," because I was getting ready to just <laughs> be a mess. Do you realize how big you are for the culture and what you did for the culture? Do you step back and be like, "Damn!" Like, yeah, do you know, does you Mary J. Blige icon. know who she is Legend, now? Yeah. Do you know who you are now? Yeah, I do. <laughs> mm. I do. I do. Listen and, to and, Met the Man and, and, and him saying, you know, you the you you turn hip hop into R and B where dudes could listen to R and B music and dance and have a good time. And when he said that, I'm sitting like, damn, he's absolutely right. Like, I wonder if Mary knows how big she is and what she means to the culture. I do now. It took me a while. It took me 2016 was the day I woke up and said, all right. <laughs> you know, I'm it. I earned it. Yes, I earned it. Like mm-hmm. I went through. Like from hell to hell to hell to hell to hell to hell to hell, and 2016 was like enough of this hell, man. Uh, enough of beating yourself up. Enough not taking your flowers. It's people are coming to you and they're in front of you with it, so so you can receive it. Right. So it it, it took me a minute to learn how to receive, but I'm receiving it now, and I think it's a, a it's, it's a shame to not receive. So um. It's important to us, though. I think what really resonates is that you were so involved with the process of making the music. And that's what makes it so relatable because anyone can sing a song, but when you can sing a song and it has emotion and it's heartfelt and you're Mm -hmm. like, I know exactly what she's going through and exactly what she meant when she wrote that Mm -hmm. or when she sang that, I think that's what really resonates more than anything else with people. And just for you to go back to my life and look at the things that you were going through 
during that time and the music that you wrote and how amazing it was. And even ending it with be happy. Like, I know right now people don't, I feel like people don't pay as much attention as, to the order that they sequence their albums in. But what about that with my life? Just sequencing the album, like opening it up and the whole journey. Were you involved in that process of knowing <laughs> how you wanted to open it and end it? No, Puff was, the <laughs> he was the man at that. I, I would just make the music and he would put it all together and bring it to me and be like, listen to this. And I'd be like, wow, like, it's exactly like I wanted it. You know, same thing with the remix album for what's the 411. Mm -hmm. Had all I did was sing whatever I sang, did what I, he put the whole thing together, brought it to me, blew me away. Do you, you think you could make another My Life if you tried or was that a moment in time? There, no, I can't. Mm -hmm. my, my life was what it was and we went past that. You know, I made Growing Pains, I made Mary, I made mm -hmm. Share My mm -hmm, World, mm -hmm. I made No More Drama, I made Stronger With Each Tear, I made mm -hmm. My Life Part Two, I tried, but niggas was like, nah, we mm -hmm. good. But, you know, history is history. And I know, they it. talked about the sophomore jinx too in the documentary. There was a concern over that after, you know, what's the 411 huge album and then how are we gonna follow this up? Was that something that was your concern or just the people around you? That was people around saying it. So I was like, okay, when they said it, like Puff said it, you know, people was around saying it. So, I, you know, it made me a little concerned, but then I was in so much pain. I was like, man, pff, whatever. I gotta work out what I'm working out now. Is there anything that you regret? Like you look at your life and see all the things that you started, the trends, whether it was the skirt and the jerseys or the Mary dance or the boots. Like those are things that, that oh, we you love created, those. you know? Yeah. Is there anything that you regret? Be like, damn, I just wish I didn't do that or a hairstyle that you hated or an <laughs> album cover or something that you just like, I shouldn't have done that. Well, there's so many hairstyles that I hated, but I don't regret <laughs> anything I did. Like, mm -hmm. I, I just think if I leave something out, there's no this, mm -hmm. there's no being here right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, since, since you, you know, now realize who you are and the impact you have on people, does it make you more intentional about, about your words? Yes, and it makes me um, more res know that it's a responsibility. And um, I have to take all this with with humility. I can't mm -hmm. just take it like, eh. I have to take it with thank you and grace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you so much. But, you know, when it's go time, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm a monster with it. <laughs> you know, from performing, you know, to whatever I do, I give 100%. And I can't think about what someone's thinking about me or what someone's not thinking about me. I got to just go go with the confidence that I have, but I, I receive it with grace and humility. Is there, I, is there ever a time where Mary would do a versus? Because we talk about uh, unbeatable artists, right? In my opinion, you and Hov. And it was a, I say it all the time. There was just a rumor unbeatable. about Tony Braxton and they had to clear that up. Would that you they do said a versus? You and Hov unbeatable. I don't know what a versus would do for me. I don't, like, I'm Because it's not about you, it's about it's us. A it's a celebration. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a celebration. It's a celebration. <laughs> like, I don't know what, what a versus can do for Mary J. Plige right now, but um, right now, it's not something that's on the top of my list. It got to be extended 100 song verses. But yeah, you know, no, nah. <laughs> nah, not no. Nah. Because you got too many songs. Like, I don't even know. How could you narrow it down to 20? <laughs> you couldn't. <laughs> nah, Can't nobody fuck with Mary J. Blige in no verses. No. I say it all the time. It's not, <laughs> not even close. Mm -mm. Can't even tie your shoes. You could do one a celebration like D'Angelo did where he just had like the guest, um, the guest come on stage at the Apollo and perform with him. But it wasn't against anybody necessarily. More like just a Mary celebration. Let's pay for a ticket for a concert. Yeah, like, yeah come to my concert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 you dedicated the doctor, uh, Mr. Andre Harrell, who you called dad. Mm -hmm. at, at what point did he become that father figure in your life? When um, I was in the music industry alone with no father figure. Mm. And he was there a lot. Like, every, you know, to, like he was there to talk me out of my foolishness. Mm. <laughs> what are you doing, Mary? Like, well, you know. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing drugs? Why are you doing alcohol? Like, like I, I would hide from him because I didn't want him, want him to see me, mm. you know, in that condition, because I knew he had something to say, and he'd just be giving me that look, like, like a father, like I don't like this, yeah. And I was hiding. I was hiding all the stuff I was doing from Puff. He didn't really know. Mm. Could you, could you ever love again? Like, be in love again with somebody? Would you ever have that trust for somebody again, or no? Um, love is. Love is beautiful for the moment, for some time. You know, I, I would never reject love, but marriage is something that I would reject right now. Mm -hmm. 
I, I can also tell you know, just by watching the doc, you have been doing a lot of healing work. Do you, do you mind sharing what you've been doing? Just some um, self help books, <laughs> prayer, looking at myself real good, <laughs> mm-hmm. always checking myself. Like if something is bothering me about someone, why? Is that but why is something about you bothering me? Mm-hmm. Um, just you know, I have friends and people that are into self, you know, healing too. Mm-hmm. That are teachers and stuff like that. So I take information that makes sense to me from anywhere where I can get it. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you have a good word, I'll, I'll take a good word. If you got a word, I'll take a word from you. Um, um, like I said, prayer top of the list because prayer just reveals to you you. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and sometimes the worst thing to look at is you, but I, I'd rather see me acting ugly or see me needing whatever kind of help I need so I can know how to fix it. And that's really it. It's no, it's no like, oh, you know, I visited, you know, all the strengths in the world with nothing, <laughs> nothing's wrong with that, nothing's right, right, wrong right. With that mm-hmm. at all, you know, but I think the best shrink is us. Like mm-hmm. we, we just need to be able to look at ourselves and, and, and say it's okay. I know Taraji been on you about going to therapy though. Nah, no, she, no, like we don't, we don't badger each other with stuff gotcha. like that. It's like right. when you ready. I feel like when that's a ready. Capricorn thing too. Yeah, we I'm don't a, get yeah. in the way. We like look, I'm like Capricorn it, we love it. Yeah. You all right? You safe? You good? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Call me out when something go wrong now. <laughs> you know, but we don't like you need to, you need because we don't want nobody you need yeah. to and us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not judgmental. <laughs> we like yeah. now. What about your instincts? You talk a lot about how you have really great instincts. Were there times that you feel like you should have followed your instincts and you didn't and you disregarded it? Every day, my every <laughs> damn near every day from from nineteen ninety four to for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I didn't, when I don't listen to my gut or my instincts. Ugh, disaster. I mean, like big disasters. Like I've had some big disasters that I didn't follow. My what was like. the moment where you say, "Okay, God, I finally hear you." <laughs> Twenty sixteen. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. And, and what got you into you know saying, you know what, I'm gonna sit down and do a series? Like you know, we've seen you in movies before, and usually mm-hmm. that's might be a short stint, and then you can go back on the road and you do what you do. But now, like you have to stay in one space. You have to film. Mm-hmm. Like you know, last night you were filming to midnight. Like. What made you say, I'm going to do this full time? I'm doing power. I'm power. The character, yeah. I mean, I'm a power fan, been a power fan, so that's why I'm on the show right now. Um, this character is so much fun <laughs> and it's very cathartic. Like, I mm-hmm. get to just blow people away <laughs> that I always wanted to blow away in my mind mm-hmm. <laughs> and then forget about it when mm-hmm. I get home. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. <laughs> and I get to curse, I, I get to do all types of just crazy stuff, you know. So the art is what makes you just say, you know, I'm going to stay up. And I'm and I'm gonna do my do do my job. So wait, Great. when you're acting, you're picturing blowing away somebody else in real life. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. whatever works. Whatever works. <laughs> well, it's method acting. You got to visit some dark places. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So whatever you, you have to a real place. If you got a real place, whether it belongs to you or somebody else, visit that place and make the character real. That's mm-hmm. what I do. I visit. I visit. I go back and visit horrible things that have happened in my life and mm-hmm. I, wow it's, it's and i just do you have time for yourself though because it seems like that character is going to continue to go that character's not going anywhere it seems like it's getting spin-offs and all types of stuff do you have time for you know what mary time yeah i take that mary time mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. I, i'd be exhausted but i, I get the time i need mm-hmm. and i need leisure like pleasure time you know girlfriend time sister time mother mm-hmm. time i have it what, what did you learn about yourself after after completing the, the my life documentary Man, that um, I'm I'm a really strong individual. Absolutely. Yeah. Goodness gracious! I mean that that documentary, you, you forget, and I don't want to say I forget, but you forget the influence when you start seeing the young girls and saying they look up to you and they respect you. And they've been through the things that you've been through, and how does that make you feel when you see? Because there was young girls that mm-hmm. their mama had to be playing your music, and how does that make you feel? Beautiful, because then. I didn't know what anybody cared. Like I didn't know Alicia Keys cared. I didn't know mm-hmm. nobody cared. You know, I didn't know what? I didn't know nobody cared you until I until, but, it, but see, I didn't know that then. I didn't know that then. You know, whoever was out, whoever was you know was doing and trying to be like Mary J. Blige. It, I was like, it didn't matter because it. I, I didn't matter. I, I just. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? I, I get it, it was just. Even when rappers were saying- You were living your life and not understanding what you meant to other people because you were just trying to survive, like you said. Exactly. And make it through and do your job and work. 
and not even considering like these people are coming up because sometimes people will be coming up to you and it didn't even look like you comprehended like how exciting it was yeah because i didn't know i deserved any of it i didn't know i was supposed to be praised i didn't know i was supposed to be loved so i didn't know anybody even cared like i didn't know young girls you know wanted to be like me or there was so many people that would die if they you know heard the my life album or whatever i didn't know i had that much power and i didn't i didn't want it either i didn't right. want that much power and you were dumbing yourself down you said in your own relationship yeah. because you didn't want to shine too bright that's how you know it's some yeah i just i didn't want you know just like in the hood i just didn't want people messing with me you know you you, you get too happy or you get too brave or too braggadocious you gotta fight somebody or mm -hmm. you gotta you know this guy might start getting insecure because you think you're beautiful and so that's those are the things i had to lay down like excuse my french fuck that right <laughs> i need to live i need to breathe i gotta take my time and my space for me the hell with y'all i suffered too much for y'all mm -hmm. so that there's no more of that so even back in the day when when guys like jay would say i did songs with mary j blige my nigga like like he was saying that out of excitement mm -hmm. that didn't do nothing for you didn't for even... a moment yeah yeah for a second and then i'll be back to you know what i mean it mm -hmm. was like all right that's dope and then now what yeah now, now new music i i heard when i ended the documentary there's a new song i never heard that song before so i'm mm -hmm. assuming it's new it's new yeah it's it's new with the documentary are you going to do a new album or is, is that the process have you started working already or I, i'm already in the process i'm already there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got some new music. Y'all gonna play it? Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say that. We, <laughs> we support we you. Y'all ready? We support you. Let me All tell right. you how much I support, Mary. I went to go see you perform and like a regular, you know, in the audience and waited online to take a picture with everybody else. I came backstage. You know how they be having like the special ticket? <laughs> I did all of that because I was like, I'm not asking for no special favors. It's Mary J. Blige. I don't even go to contests like voluntarily because we do it so much for work. But I was like, Mary's in town. I'm going to see Mary. And then I was like, Thank let me go you. wait online just to take a picture with Mary and keep it moving because we're like all, I think, unapologetic Mary fans up here. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. I, I also realized in the doc, you don't you don't mind being called auntie by your actual family. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my nieces and nephews. I know. <laughs> but I felt for him for a second. I was like, oh, shit. What's going to happen? No, that's my, those are my babies. <laughs> <laughs> those are my real nieces and yes. nephews. And yes. is there a biopic in the works? Because it feels like that's no, a natural. not right now. This is it for now. I think people got enough for now. I know uh, people are beating down your door, though, to do something like that, because that would be amazing. They are, but it's, it's, I think this is enough for now. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's so much of a, it's like 50 stories. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't feel like it was enough. I said after an hour and 22 minutes, oh. I was like, we need I want more. Yeah. Yeah, I, wow. I, I, I really did. I, I wanted to know see. more wow. about, and maybe it's just me being greedy. I wanted to know more about each individual song. Because to me, the doc uh, just showed the emotion that went into the album. Yeah, that's really it. Mm -hmm. That's And that's what we wanted. Because it's mm -hmm. about the My Life album. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't go overboard with more because we didn't we didn't need to. It was just about the My Life album. It was about the fans giving their testimonies. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. We learned a lot. Definitely. Oh, definitely. We learned a lot about definitely. you. Definitely learned yeah. a lot. So, yeah. So, and when, I like seeing your family. I liked having a chance to see like all of that, that side of Mary that we don't see. We see you know, Mary out and about working, doing her thing, but to see your family and to see what they had to say about you, I think that was, it made us feel even more connected. Thank you. When when do you know the right time to tell, I guess, your complete story? I, I don't know, but right now, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is enough for now. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more. Jesus, it's so much more. Um, Later sometime, like <laughs> late in life. Like, I'm exhausted of this shit. <laughs> only, I only got two more questions. Well, like, look, I got one. Okay. I got one. Uh -huh. Madison Square Garden, right? I was talking about this, right? First, I want to ask the room, and then I want to ask you, Mary. Madison Square Garden sold out. You got one song to perform. What song do you want to hear Mary perform? From me? Um, either either the My Life, the title track to My Life. Or, okay, or, just, or, one, just one? Yeah, probably Yee? the title track to My Life. That's a gospel record. That record's about God. Come on, Yee, just one record. Man, that's a, I can't say just one, one record. record. Come on, Yee. I would probably want to do something that... Mm, Come on, ye. I don't know. That's a hard. You got to take tonight. Come on, like, one I song. have a lot of great memories. It's like a soundtrack to my life. So there's some good memories, some bad ones too. 
to some. Do, do I want to hear something that's like fun? Oh, that was a great memory. Or do I want to hear something that was like painful? <laughs> Not as love no. I like the painful remix. memories. I like my life because it helps me cry when Probably. I need a good cry. Now, what mm. would you perform? Mary? I do like "Be Happy" though. That'll always be like my song because I feel that. Be happy. One song, got to perform. One song, sold out. What's the song you performing? Oh, my life. My life. Yeah. That's the one, man. Yep. That's I wonder even that about you. And you, you say, um, you know, don't when, when you're feeling down, don't you ever fake it? It's like, is that why you were like so closed off maybe back in the day in interviews? Because you didn't want to show pe- you're such a straight shooter. You didn't want to show people what you was really going through. I didn't want people to see me cry. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to see people to see me smile. I didn't want people to see anything that could uh, lead to them thinking I'm soft in any way because I just didn't trust people with my emotions and my feelings. I just didn't trust them with that part of me because as soon as you open up, they pull the rug from under you, you bust your head on the floor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Mm -hmm. that's what that was about. Now wine, how did you get into the wine business? How did that start? Well, let's tell the story. So I was on tour with Maxwell was it 2016? I was. I went to Envy's wife yeah. loves Maxwell. Yeah, Envy's wife was. I was at the show. I went Maxwell. to the show. <laughs> Why your voice getting high, bro? Relax, <laughs> man. Some of my wife liking another man. Mary's talking. Continue, Mary. So bad. So I was on a tour with Maxwell, mm-hmm. and um, Maxwell knew all these. You know, Maxwell knows a lot of people, and he's friendly and beautiful. And Maxwell's like, Mary, I got these um. Um, um, Italian friends that I want you to hang out with with us one, one night. So we all hung out and I was killing the Santa Margarita uh, Pinot Grigio like just drinking and just mm-hmm. all night and one of them said to me so Mary, why don't you, why don't you do a, a white wine? And I went, <laughs> it, it was a no brain. I didn't mm-hmm. blink, I didn't stutter, I just said yes! And before you knew it, I was on a plane meeting these guys, Marco Fontenelle on their own property mm-hmm. um we touched down, we started tasting what the white wine was going to taste like, tasting what the Sauvignon Blanc was going to taste like. And then they had this gigantic party and food and more mm-hmm. wine and just people. And the next day it, it was work. Then I found out what the, the, the grapes looked like and mm-hmm. what they felt like. And I was in the vineyard. So it was just like quickly, it was like a labor of love. It just happened so fast. It was Maxwell, friends, plain, That's dope. wine. <laughs> How'd you come up with the name? Um, my sister, Latanya. So if we're out on the beach, mm-hmm. all the girls, I'm always the last one because I could take the sun a lot and I liked the sun a lot when I was little. And so when it's too hot for Latanya, she'll say, all right, sun goddess, I had enough of this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I just named it sun goddess because of my, my big sister. And I like so. the packaging too. Thank you. It's a nice bottle. My, my last you. question, because I, I could tell you're ready to go. Right? How, how, how would this whole, this whole more healed version of, of Mary J. Blige tell younger Mary how not to get in her way? Well, I always say if she could, if she can hear me, which I don't think she could, it's two different Marys. One, the younger Mary is not going to listen to nobody. Mm. So all the healed Mary definitely can't tell her what to do. But if she would listen, I would just say, stop being afraid of you. That's you. That big thing you're feeling that you're running from, that's you. All right, well, wow. ladies and gentlemen, Mary, Mary J. J. Motherfucking Blige. Congratulations on the documentary. Thank Man. you, guys. Wine. We can't wait to hear more music. Nah, we. I, 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 I love you in a real way. Like you, 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 your, your music has been the soundtrack to my life in a, in a, in a real, real way. And even now, as I'm older, I understand the music more. So a song like My Life hits different. A song like Be Happy when I'm you know, dealing with some depression or something, it hits different. So just yeah. just thank you for being you. Yes. Thank There's you. not too many it. artists that you could say their music has withstood the test of time. Wow. And then yours has. Thank you, guys. I, I, I've i received my flowers there right now. Can, can, Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. But, but, but can we have the song? Can we uh, play the song right now? Or, or what song? The, docu- the one on the documentary. No, nah, that ain't that kind of song. It's, it's, What's the one you oh, want us to play? You got something I don't, to play? I don't have it, but when I have it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to hear it up here. <laughs> and it's <laughs> coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Right. Yeah. Well, it's Mary J. Blige. <laughs> it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. 